Okay, now that we have our uh, course generating, let's go ahead and add some obstacles that we can dodge. So we're going to make these a blueprint as well. So we'll go to Blueprints, right-click, add a Blueprint class, and Actor. So we'll BP, we'll call this BP Blocker. And we'll open that up. Now this is going to be super simple. All we're going to do is add a Static Mesh and set the type to be SM Rock. So we use this big rock. And I'm just trying to use uh, stuff that's in the starter content. So if you guys want to follow along, you'll be able to use this rock as well. So we'll compile and save that. Now we're going to go to our floor tile. And we're going to want to spawn these randomly on our floor tile. But we don't want it to be completely random. We're going to, for the rocks, we're going to use specified points. And for those, to represent those, I'm going to put in some arrow components. And I'm going to call this spawn point. And I'm going to move it off to the far end a little bit, and maybe up a few units, 30 units or so. And I'm going to duplicate that. I'll call this spawn point L for left. And move it over there. I'll duplicate it again and make it spawn point R. Okay, so now we have these arrows that are going to represent where we want to spawn our uh, rocks. So what we're going to need to do is, first of all, I'm going to save these locations where these arrows are into a uh, an array. So I'm going to make a quick little function to do that. And I'm just going to say get spawn points. In fact, you know what? I'm going to say set. Set spawn points. And all I'm going to do is, I'm going to take my components here, the arrows that I just added, And I'm going to get their relative transform for each one of these. So I'll just copy this, get your relative transform, and also I'll get a relative transform from you. So I'm going to find out where in the world relative these, these arrows are. And let me make sure these are connected. So I'm going to get all three of these relative transforms, and then I'm going to stick them in an array. So to do that, I can just do make array, I'll add some pins, and I can start attaching these. And you'll see that as I attach these, the color changed to represent that these are transforms. So now that I have the array made, I want to save this in a variable. So I'll promote it to a variable. I'll call it spawn points. And let's make sure that we get this guy connected up. Okay, so now we have this little little function that's just taking the arrows, finding out where they are, and sticking them in an array. So on construction script, I'm just going to call this right away. I want to immediately create this variable with these transforms in it. So then I'm going to make another function, and I'm going to call this spawn blocker. And this is going to do the work of spawning our obstacles. So I'm going to drag off of here, and the first thing I'll do is add a child actor component. Now, I could just spawn actor from class again, but what I want to do is, as I, you know, as I said up before, I'm, I'm throwing away the floors as we run off in the distance. And if we use the child actor component, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be connected to that floor, its parent floor. So when that floor gets thrown away, it's going to throw away anything that's attached to any child actor that's on it. So all the, the obstacles and whatever else we have that goes with that floor. So this way it'll just keep things cleaner. So for the actor class, we we'll use our blocker. And where we want to spawn it, we'll take our spawn points array and we'll get something from that. And if we go ahead, this will automatically work. So, well not automatically, we'll go to our construction script and after we set the spawn points, let's spawn the blocker. So now if we compile, we're going to get a rock on one of our arrows. But we don't want it just on one arrow. We want to randomly go on one of these three arrows. So let's go back to spawn blocker. This is super easy to do. We can just drag off of here. Random integer in range. And then get the last index from our array. And we'll go 0 to that last index. So now if we go back here and we simulate, it's going to jump around to different points. Okay, excellent. So let's see how this looks in the game. If we play, we're running, 
we're not really running. We're kind of strolling here. So let's quickly jump over to our character and, and make him go a little faster. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to my blueprint. And we're going to make sure we show inherited variables so we can see the variables from our parent class. We'll open up character and select the character movement. And over in details, we'll open that up. And we'll go down to max walk speed here, which now is 600. So even though we're given max input every time, it's maxing out at 600. So let's pop this up to, say, 1500. That'll get us running a little bit faster. There we go. We're running fast. And as you may have noticed, we are going through these rocks. And that's not what we want. So let's find out why that's happening and fix it up. So we'll go to our blocker, select our mesh. And if we go to collision presets, we're on block all dynamics, so that's not the issue. I'm betting that this static mesh doesn't have any collision on it. And it does not. We have collision showing here, and we have no collision. But we can fix that real quick in Unreal Engine 4. We'll just go to collision, hit auto convex collision. We'll get this little menu, and I'll just keep it at defaults and hit apply. And there we go. Now we've got a little collision mesh uh, attached to our mesh. So we'll save that, close it out. And now we should be able to smack into these things. Boom. All right. Fantastic. But that itself doesn't do anything. So let's make it do something. Let's make it kill our character. Uh, so we'll go into our run character. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make another custom event. And I'll call this guy death. He's super tiny. So let's zoom in here to see that. Okay. So this is going to be our death function. And when our player dies, we're going to call this. And it's going to be our death routine. So normally when you were setting up a game, you'd probably want to have some sort of death animation or whatever. Um, since we're prototyping, I just want a visual representation that we're dead. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to disable input. And the next thing, like I said, I just want a visual, visual representation. So I'm going to spawn emitter. And I'm going to use the P explosion. And... Man, I do demos a lot, and for some reason, a player running into something exploding seems to get a laugh everywhere I go. I don't know why. So uh, I tend to use that quite a lot for player death. But anyway, we'll spawn that from the actor location. And while we're at it, why don't we play the explosion sound as well. And again, hey, this is stuff that's in uh, the uh, starter content, so you guys can do the exact same thing. Or get more fancy and, and do something else for your death. Um, so we'll do that, and then let's take the mesh and set the visibility on that to be hidden. So visibility is unchecked. So we'll hide the mesh. So when we smack into this, our death routine is going to play some particles, play a sound, and hide the mesh. So we're going to need to call this from our, our blocker when we hit it. So we'll go to our rock. We'll go down and we'll add an on component hit. Now on this we'll drag off, we'll cast to our run character, just make sure it's our player. And if it is, let's call that death function. Make him die. Alright, so there we go. We'll save that off. I don't think we really need to mess with our blocker anymore, so I'm just gonna close him off. So now let's test this out and see what happens. We can run, and we hit it. Boom. All right. We have a little problem here. And I know exactly what this is. We're done. We disabled input because we don't want to dodge anymore. But if you remember, in our movement input, we are telling it to move forward on tick. And that's going to always happen. So let's set a branch here. And we'll make the condition a variable. And I'm going to make this is dead. So if I'm dead, I don't want to move forward anymore. So this is now saying if I'm dead is true, keep moving forward. We want to change that. So I'm going to hold control and I can reattach this to false. So now if we're dead, uh, we're going to check is dead. If it's false, we're going to keep moving forward. If it's true, we're not going to do anything. And let's make sure that down in our death function, we go and we set this to true when we die. So we'll go and set that to true. And let me just check here real quick. I'm going to compile this. 
uh, is dead by default. We're true. We don't want that. We don't want to be dead by default. Okay, so we're going to uncheck that. Um, and then we'll compile and save. So now we've got this checking to make sure that we're not going to keep trying to move forward. So we should hit the rock and explode once. Fantastic. So while we're at it, for prototyping purposes, we're probably going to want to test a bunch. So let's set up a reset thing here. Where I'm just going to throw a delay in. of Two seconds. And then, again, you would do something more complex with restarting your game in a real game. But as a prototype, let's just call console command restart level. So this way we should be able to play, die, and it should restart our, our map. Boom, dead, two seconds, and we restart with a new stage. Okay, excellent. So now we have a guy running. Um, we've got some obstacles that we can dodge that come out randomly, and we hit them and we explode for some reason. We're made out of TNT or something. Anyway, um, so let's uh, end the video here. In the next video, let's put some good items in that we can pick up.